All right, everybody, here we are inside of Unity. And today we're gonna to be teaching this matcap shader here. Now, matcaps can be added to surfaces like this one, for example, like this reflection here is from a matcap. The same goes for the hair here. The hair has reflection on the matcap. However, for this tutorial in specific, I'm gonna be making this shader in particular, which is for glass. So just so you know, you don't need to make this glass base okay this can be done in other ways but um, so for example here you can blend it with other shaders other existing shaders but the goal is to really showcase principles behind matcap so I have here a couple of matcap images as well as an exemplification and you can kind of see that all of them are pretty much these round looking things right with kind of a reflection sphere type of deal going on and uh, this is what you want to have for matcaps these matcaps here I got straight up from the internet so uh, you can likely find those. We're going to be using Amplify Shader Editor as always. So let's just create a new shader and we're going to call this one Tutorial. Great. So we have here our beautiful shader open. Let me make it big for you guys. So since we're going to be making a, what do you call it? A glass material. Glass is transparent. So we want to make some changes here. So these first initial settings are fine. I'm not going to cast shadows and I'm not going to receive shadows in this shader in particular. This is just a personal taste thing. And uh, here on our blend mode, we're going to make it transparent. Actually, you can select here uh, the transparent preset here on the blend mode. You have those little arrows. You click on transparent and uh, that should cover us pretty much. All right, great. So the very first thing we're going to do here. Oh, something else. Uh, I'm going to make this unlit as well. So yeah, we're going to we're going to go here on the lighting model and we're going to make it all lit. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is that I'm just going to get a texture and I'm just going to get a matte cap, a random matte cap here. Let's get this one. And I'm just going to plug it into the emission channel just for us to take a little bit of a look. And I'm also going to plug it into the opacity channel. So if I save this and now I go over here, I right click my shader and I select material. We're going to create a new material. And I'm just going to make a default Unity Sphere here. And we're going to assign the material to this. And you can kind of see what it's doing. So uh, the texture is just being overlaid on the UVs of this sphere right here. So what we want to do, the concept behind matte caps, is that we want to take the normals from our object, which in this case, of course, it's a sphere. So we want to take the normals from them, which are parts of the vertices. So imagine that this is a triangle each face of this sphere has a normal which points in a direction right so if we imagine we had a triangle over here this triangle would be pointing kind of like on that direction so we want to take the roll to normal and based on the view direction of our camera so in this case my camera imagine that the edges of the screen itself are the camera and you are pointing an arrow going straight you know in the middle of this sphere in this example in particular and uh, based on that we want to make our uvs to override the rendering of that texture there's also a couple more tricks behind these but this is kind of the concept so instead of using the uv we want to change the uv of the model we want to use this uv's overrides so let's do exactly that so we need the rolled normal so we can thankfully just get that here so we have rolled normal we don't need to normalize this one and we have our view matrix so the view matrix holds pretty much all of the information regarding our view direction on our camera and our game and we can just multiply one thing by the other. So now, if we just plug this into the UV, let's see what that looks like. You can kind of see that now, as I move this around, it's doing something to the UVs, right? But it's also extremely, you, you can see there's four little spheres here. And uh, essentially, this needs to be halved, right? So what we can do to halve it is that we can just do a float. We can make it 0.5 and we can simply multiply everything by 0.5. Oh, sorry, we need to create a new multiply here. 
we can just multiply it by 0.5. And if I put this into the UVs, you're now gonna realize that, oh, these are invisible now. Oh, I disabled the game object, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you can see now that it's closer to us, but it's not centered correctly. Well, this is because when you do UV multiplications, sometimes the UVs start at zero, zero. But sometimes things also start at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So what's happening here is that the view matrix starts at zero, zero, but when you're rendering textures, things have an offset of 0.5. So this means that we need to add 0.5 to this operation. So we just multiplied everything by half. Well, now we got to add half to these vectors. And if I put this here, you can see already a little bit of a spoiler alert there on the little thumbnail, but now it works. And as I move my camera around, you can kind of see here how it's doing things. And we already have a functional mat cap. So now that we have this functional mat cap here, you can kind of see that as I move around, it reacts to my camera position. It's important to note that this is directly related to the normal direction. So usually mat caps work best with flattened-ish normals. So you can see here how these hair strands, they have flat normals, and this causes the reflections to happen both in multiple times, and also the reflection looks like a little specular dot, which looks pretty neat. So this sphere here, it's perhaps not the best example, but it's the example we're going to use. So for glass, which is our example here, sometimes we want to add some extra features. So the ver very first thing here that I think we should add is the ability to tint the matte cap. So essentially give it a color. So let's just get a color, make it into a property, and we can call this matte cap tint. By the way, everything I'm doing here, you can do instead of a function as well. So you can add it to your future shaders. That's a, that's a very clean implementation. So let's make it blue for now. And let's also multiply this color by the tint. So now the matte cap is gonna have a little bit of a blue hue to it. Something else I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna make a float and I'm gonna call this glass opacity. And I'm just gonna have a minimum of zero, a max of one. We're gonna promote it into a variable and uh, we're going to multiply this. We're gonna multiply this color here by that. And uh, now we're gonna add those two things here. So essentially I want this to go above baseline. So if we wanna make the glass 100% opaque, it's also gonna overshadow a little bit of the reflection. So we can plug that into emission, put this at 0.5 as a default value. I think that's gonna work well. And finally, we're gonna override our alpha to have glass opacity as one of the interfering factors here. Additionally, well, let's let's first preview here how this looks. So now you can see here that even on the parts that before were completely opaque because it was missing the matte cap, now it still has a little bit of glass in there. But if can go back to how it was in the past. So this allows us to have a baseline of a uh, glass color. And of course, I can also manipulate here. Our color variable should be whatever color I want, which is pretty good. However, sometimes we want this glass to be additive, for example, and sometimes we want the glass to be alpha blended. There's actually one easy way to do this. So let's create a new variable here. Let's make it into a property, and we're gonna call this blend mode. Here on the attributes, we're gonna select enum. We're gonna expand and the enum menu and we're going to use engine enum class and here we're going to select unity engine rendering blend mode great so we're not going to plug this anywhere we're just going to leave it hanging here but if we do that it's not going to show up on the material inspector so you need to check auto register here on the property for the variable so now what we're going to do is that we can actually put this into custom instead of being transparent. And you see here on the alpha blend, we have source alpha and the destiny is one minus source alpha. So we can actually click those little, that little sphere here. You see this one, you can click it. And when you click on it, it actually gives you the variables that you have in your graph and you can select them. So in my case, I'm gonna select blend mode. We're gonna save it. And now if I close this up, you're gonna notice that uh, here on the blend mode, we have a blend mode variable. There's zero, one, destiny color. There's all of those, including one minus source alpha, which was what was before. And we can put it into one to make it additive, for example. So this is one neat little trick. And that, my friends, is how you make yourself, that is how you make yourself a glass matte cap. So I can just uh, swap here for a new shader. And, uh, well, I should probably 
increase the intensity a little bit and boom we got yourself a matte cap based glass shader very lightweight and perfect for mobile and heavily stylized video games